Hi, I'm David Mines, and I'm looking forward to presenting again at the Hinman Dental Meeting. This will be the seventh time I've been invited to speak at the Hinman. I've always had a good response, but this year we're going to be doing something a little different. I'd like you to join me and watch this video for the next 10 minutes. In it, I'll be explaining the very exciting news about what we'll be offering at the Total Health Pavilion on the exhibit floor. This is the first time this very new and advanced screening has been offered. After you've completed the viewing, I'll be right back and give you all the details. On the day of our program, everyone will have an opportunity to participate in an easy, quick test called the CIMT. Now that stands for Carotid Intimal Medial Thickness. This ultrasound test looks at the health of your carotids, those arteries found in your neck. Now, this is not the same ultrasound test that you may have done in the past as part of a health screening. While it may look at the same part of the body, this new technology has only been around a short amount of time. It gives us a far better picture of your future health. Unfortunately, this technology is not yet widely available around the U.S., even in major cities. But we are bringing one of the machines to your event, so you'll have access to it then. Let me tell you why you need this CIMT test. As a man or woman in the U.S., the number one threat to your health is cardiovascular disease. That means a heart attack or stroke. That's more likely to be on your death certificate than anything else, and it gets a lot of people in their 40s, 50s, and 60s, way too early. Every minute, someone dies from a heart attack in the United States. But it doesn't have to be that way. Now, don't lose me here. You may think you and your physician have got this whole cholesterol thing under control. That's what most people think. The truth is, you probably don't. Of course, you already know it's important to lower your cholesterol. You might even know what your number is. By the way, don't celebrate if you've been told it's normal. Did you know that half the people who have heart attacks have normal cholesterols? If all you know is your cholesterol number, you're practicing 30-year-old preventive medicine. If you know your HDLs and your LDLs, don't get too smug either. That's old news too. Maybe you even had a treadmill test and you passed with flying colors. Good for you. Did you know that that test only reveals a problem when your coronary arteries are about 70% blocked? 70%? Do you want to wait that long? I don't. In our upcoming meeting, you're going to understand why the current standard of care falls dramatically short in keeping you from having a heart attack or stroke. You'll also understand that we now have the knowledge to keep you from ever having one in the first place, or if you've already had one, having another one. So here's the current standard of care. Let's say you're a 50-year-old male, don't smoke, have normal cholesterol levels, you eat well, you exercise, and you're not overweight. Your statistical odds of having a heart attack over the next 10 years is about 4%. Minimal. Probably not going to happen. Nothing to worry about. But the problem is that that prediction is based on a population experience. In other words, if you got a group of 100 people just like you, only four of the hundred would be expected to have a heart attack in the next decade. But you are not a population. You are an individual. The current standard that most doctors use to determine your statistical risk is not very predictive of you as an individual. If you have a 4% risk, your physician is just going to congratulate you and tell you to keep up the good work. Yet everyone knows stories of people who did everything right, followed the rules, were healthy, and still died from an unexpected heart attack. Now, the normal response to a tragedy like that is, well, you just never know. You just never can tell. That's absolutely wrong. We now absolutely can tell. A heart attack or stroke is not a surprise if you know what to look for. You can see it coming. And if you know what to look for, you can prevent it. And that is the point. Of course, if your cholesterol numbers are a little high and you're carrying some extra pounds and you have some other risk factors, your risk may be higher than 4%. Your doctor may put you on a statin drug like Lipitor or Crestor. They may give you a blood pressure medicine as well. And they'll monitor you. But all this care can result in a false sense of security. Here's why. The reason why trusting your physician may result in a heart attack or stroke is that they're not using the very best technology available to show you what's really going on inside your body. We now have new technology that can reveal what's going on inside your arteries long before the most commonly used medical tools can detect it. That technology is called the CIMT, and you'll have access to it at our meeting. 
Let me ask you, do you remember NBC newsman Tim Russert? He was provided with the very best care available. His doctor had put him on a statin for his cholesterol. He was taking blood pressure medicine and aspirin, and he got his cholesterol numbers where his doctor wanted them. He even passed a stress test. And yet, he died at work eight weeks after passing that stress test. He was just 58. How can something like that happen? We used to think that most people that had a heart attack or stroke had one simply because their arteries eventually got clogged up. But here's the new information. We now know that most people that have a heart attack or stroke have clean arteries one minute before it happens. I'll say that again. Most people that have a heart attack or stroke have a clean artery one minute before they have the heart attack or stroke. How can that be? Well, we now understand that the disease called atherosclerosis, that that disease starts years before in the wall of the artery itself. Only when it's quite advanced does it cause the blood flow to be impeded from a narrowed artery. For a long time, the plaque and cholesterol that is growing in the artery wall causes the artery to grow in an outward fashion. That's right, the artery actually increases in size, in diameter. Only when it can't expand anymore does the disease cause what's called the lumen, where the blood is actually flowing, to become smaller. This is a totally new perspective, and we've only discovered this in the last several years. And here's the main point. Your doctor today, and even most cardiologists today, are still looking at blood flow. That's what a stress test ultimately is interested in. It looks to see if there's a partial blockage that's keeping the blood from flowing like it should be. But we now know that most heart attacks and strokes happen long before the disease is that far along. This is important because the current standard today only wants to know how your blood flow is doing. If the blood is flowing in your arteries without too much of a blockage, most medical experts don't get too concerned. But they should be. Tim Russard's doctor probably did not look at the anatomy of the artery itself. Your lumen, the place where the blood is flowing, can be completely open and you could still be at very high risk. Look, these are not bad people. These are competent medical professionals, but they're using the scientific standards from 10 or 15 years ago. Everyone will be looking at the health of the artery wall itself 10 or 15 years from now. It will become the new standard, but you may not have 10 or 15 years for it to become the standard. Many people don't have 15 years to wait for the majority of medical professionals to catch up. That's why there's a sense of urgency for you to do something about this now. So in this slide, you see a graphic depiction of a cross-section of an artery. In the middle, the hole is where the blood is flowing and would be flowing out towards you from the screen. It's in here in the artery wall where the disease starts. You see the hole is completely open and there's no impedance to the blood flow. But if you look closely, in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see the disease. There's the plaque just sitting there. And if it should break and spill its contents out into the artery, the body will attempt to fix that by creating a blood clot. And if that blood clot is big enough, you can have occlusion of the blood flow and a heart attack or stroke. Again, a minute before, you have a clean artery. One minute later, you have an artery filled up and a heart attack or stroke. On this slide, you see the actual result when the plaque ruptured and spilled its contents into the artery. Notice again that the artery was pretty clean and open before the event. And what causes that plaque to rupture? Please realize that there is only a single layer that separates the artery wall from the blood. This thing called the endothelial layer can rupture for a number of causes, including high blood pressure, stress hormones like cortisol, nicotine, the average American diet will do it, not getting enough sleep will do it, a low level of blood vitamin D, and a number of other factors too, probably some of which you have. Most Americans do have risk factors that increases the likelihood of their plaque rupturing. The bad news is that most doctors today are not looking in the right place for the disease. And beyond that, they're not using state-of-the-art blood and genetic testing that can identify why you have the disease and what to do about it. The good news is that you don't have to wait 15 years for this technology. It will become commonplace, but it's not now. You'll be able to find out exactly where you stand right now. I'm going to be bold here and say that what I'm going to share with you at our upcoming meeting will be one of the most important things you'll learn your whole life because it can literally save your life. I can't wait to meet you and your group. You're going to learn a lot. We'll have a good time 
and we might just prevent a heart attack or two. See you then. So here's my schedule for presenting at the Hinman this year. I'll be giving you more details about what you've just heard at each of my presentations. On Thursday, March 23rd, I'm presenting from 10 in the morning till 1 in the afternoon. Check your program for the specific room. Later that afternoon, I'm speaking from 3.30 to 4.30 at the Total Health Pavilion located on the exhibit floor. Then on Friday, I'm speaking from 9 to 12, and then again a different program from 1 to 4. Again, check your program for the room locations. And then on Saturday, March 25th, I'll be presenting from 10 to 11 in the morning, and again at 11.30 to 12.30 in the morning, both in the Total Health Pavilion. As I said, the CIMT is not easy to get. Most doctors are not trained in this new technology. If you can find it at a hospital, you'll pay between four and $500. Your investment for the CIMT test at Hinman is 125. I'm sure you know we'll have about 14,000 people attending Hinman. Now to make sure that you're able to get your scan done, please click on the link below to choose a day and a time slot. If you can make it on Thursday, choose a slot then. I think it'll be less crowded than on Friday and Saturday. The test takes about 10 minutes, and I'd ask that you show up about 10 minutes before your scheduled time slot. Whenever I offer this test around the United States, we always have an extraordinary response. People value the idea of preventing a heart attack or stroke. While the medical community is very good at keeping you alive once you have an event, there is still a lot of room for improvement in prevention. That's what the CIMT is all about. Remember, the average first symptom that you have cardiovascular disease is that you die. That's the most common first symptom that something was wrong. But it doesn't have to be that way anymore. We can now see a heart attack or stroke coming, and that means we can do something about it. And by the way, just because you're fit, not overweight, and eat well, doesn't mean everything is fine. Everyone's heard stories of people in great shape that had an unexpected heart attack or stroke. Don't let that happen to you or your family. Find out where you stand. If you find out you're fine, great. If you find out there's an issue, believe it or not, that's great too. That means you found out why you can still do something about it. That means you can beat what they call the silent killer. What is peace of mind worth to you? I think it's worth a lot. I hope you'll join me in my programs and schedule a scan right now. Just click on the link below and I'll see you soon.